Last night I unlocked opposing factions. Well, I don't know how opposing they are. They're competing factions. Um, a little preview of that. It shows where they're gonna settle. And you're trying to compete with them for like different things on the map. And then at the end of a cycle, whoever has the most resources uh, gets like an extra bonus of, of like currency at the end. McMagic, good morning. Good to see ya. Excited for D&D today. Uh, and yeah, I looked around the map already and I've got my eyes on a location here that uh, the Brass Order wants to settle. Let's see, we also have the First Dawn Company and Vanguard of the Stolen Keys. Anyway, this location over there has, uh, what are these called? Artifacts and Machinery. The artifacts I'm having a really hard time finding. And so that's, it looks like prime real estate to me. Artifacts, yeah, a lot of unlocks need these. I swear I turned down this volume. I like the music though. Let me turn it down just a little bit more. So we're, I'm gonna try to settle here and grab those artifacts. Uh, let's see, there's a negative here though. This is not a nice place. It's a bandit camp, which means I can't have trade routes. Which means I'm entirely I'm entirely on my own here as far as like resource gathering goes and that sort of thing. Um, I was trying to find a place nearby that is not. I don't want to play Core Highlands. I don't understand the trees, like how how much I should be using the trees. But there's a nice area of marshlands here where I'm gonna settle. And I decided that for my city names, they're all going to be authentic Italian restaurants. <clears throat> and we're going to start with Fazoli's. Fazoli's here. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm starting to like the Harpies a little bit more. They're hard to keep happy. They don't gel well with humans and dwarfs, really. But... They have a low threshold for happiness, so if you max that out, they give you completion points faster. I noticed that. But let's see here, we're doing marshlands. Uh, harsh, cold land that's claimed by different, extremely resilient species of fungi. Uh, ground is very hard and rocky, makes it difficult to farm. Uh, famous for abundant fauna and insects, so there's probably going to be a lot of meat harvesting here. Not a lot of farming, it sounds like. Uh, we've got the bandit camp negative. We also have, let's see, marshlands are a gatherer's paradise. Gathering speed is increased by 10% for every two workers assigned to a gathering camp. Okay. <clears throat> and then we have giant organisms. Which means just like bigger, bigger nodes to harvest. I'm ready. So, let's see here. I think clay is pretty good to start with. Actually, you know what I realized last time? When I tried to set up my initial settlement, I didn't have enough wood until I made a woodcutter. So I'm actually going to start with wood. We'll start with clay. For bricks. I guess stone can be bricks too. But I think clay is good to have. There's, there's something that... Uh, I guess pottery is clay specific. I've slowly been refining my strategy too. like always have a way to gather the basics um berries berries and herbs then you need some kind of vegetable you need some kind of meat set up like three gatherers uh you need some kind of container maker either water skins with leather barrels or ceramics all right, we need some kind of food too. I think we'll go with roots. Roots are pretty versatile. <clears throat> yeah, we're all set up. Let's uh, make Fazoli's great again. All right, let's take a quick look at my effects. Fermented rain, okay. Rain during a drizzle can be turned into wine. Very nice. We'll get an early rain collector set up then. <clears throat> uh, what else we got? Refreshing current of air lifts the spirit. 
So if basic needs are taken care of, workers are more willing to work. They move 20% faster. If they have a complex food and housing, okay. Uh, looming darkness. Oh, this is new. There's not a hostility level 2 negative. So we have 0 and then nothing until hostility 3. I've not seen that happen yet. Usually it's progressive. So cloudburst, this requires enough clothing. At the beginning of a storm, every villager takes one clothing. Uh, vassal tax. Ugh. Crown requires you to pay five amber each storm. That's going to be hard to do because we don't have trade routes. So I got to get amber from um, X, like the glade events. I got to be pretty diligent about that. Five amber per storm. Uh, that's only at three, though. So I think by the time that starts kicking in, we'll be pretty well set up. And Strange Lights. Villagers with this effect have 20% chance to destroy the yield. Uh, we can prevent that with services. Okay, so. <clears throat> Rain Collector. I'm thinking of an overall strategy. Right now, there's not much, I guess. Rain Collector, and we need coats. And we're going to be expedit or, um Glade focused. Alright, let's do it. Let's get this road set up. A little initial batch of logistics here. Alright. Well, thank you guys for being here today, too. I appreciate the company. Let's see what we got here. We got eight. Hey, this is a few starting resources. We have eggs, we got meat creatures. Leech Broodmother, and we have Roots, so we need Scavenger's Camp, Trapper's Camp, and Trapper's Camp can handle these eggs, too, so if we have a strategically placed Trapper's Camp, which I don't think I start with, no, we can harvest both those meats. Uh, let's see, we'll start out with, get the Scavenger Camp up here to grab the Roots. We need a woodcutter's camp. Uh, let me think of like a general flow of how the settlement's gonna go. See what glades I wanna unlock to like clear out some space. We'll probably go south. This area opens up like a pretty big patch of land. I will need to clear, like, a little initial bit of this, though, so we can expand for housing. We need, like, a, a radius around the hearth for the homes to go. Uh, I guess we can start there first. We can clear this glade as, like, a, a, an opening point. Yeah, let's do that. Get our woodcutter here, and then we'll unlock these. We'll, we'll do these trees. Clear out a little space, and then when we're ready, we'll open this glade. Actually, I'm probably going to need to open the glade soon, because we're going to have to pick blueprints. So, we'll cut we'll cut into this and see from there. Uh, what else do we need? Stone cutters. We have no stone. That's not good. So, I'm glad we grabbed the clay at the beginning. Housing we don't need yet. I do have it unlocked that I start with beaver and human houses. They're a little bit harder to build, though, so those will have to come later. They take, like, bricks, planks. Uh, we don't need a makeshift post. I do need a rain collector, so let's get the rain collector up. Wherever I put this, it's not going to be able to be moved, though, so we need it kind of outside the housing range. Just in case housing gets tight later. We don't want the rain collector too close. Otherwise, I have to destroy it and move it after. Uh, let's see. What's what is the housing range? Well, rain collector can go up here once we clear it. I think that'll be good. Yeah. Let's. So I'm just gonna keep that in the back of my mind, and we'll get a crude workstation up. Get a little path here, and we're good to go. The game has officially started. 
once we go into the clear season, I'll probably try to start building houses then. I need four houses. All right. I've been having a lot of fun with this game. Scavengers camp, let's get a human in there. Not close enough to get both roots. Which is a little unfortunate. I'll move it later. It costs five wood to move it, and wood's a bit of a struggle at the beginning. Each newcomer has two additional villagers. Or... Ancient tablets. Ancient tablets are, uh... I don't know if they have a use beyond just being a trade currency. One ancient tablet is worth five amber. But we're not trading. I think we'll just do this. But I'm gonna have to be really careful about food us usage. Especially taking this early. Taking this so early into the, the game, we're gonna be flooded with villagers. Uh, let me take a look at blueprints, too. Actually, we can do that while they're working. Trapper's camp. That's exactly what we need for meat and eggs. Trapper's camp. Where are we going to put this? Exactly where I put this crude workstation. We can set that there for now. Get the trapper's camp up so we can start getting some food. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Artie? Good morning. Good to see ya. <clears throat> uh, something new I've been doing. Global resource limits. So we'll set it up so, so we're not just like pumping out a bunch of stuff that I might not use. We'll set fabric, bricks, and planks to 10. Actually, I might need more than that. We'll set it to 15. I don't think anything takes more than 15 initially to build. Yeah, that looks good. Happy extra hour in exchange for no more sunlight day. Thank you, Artie. I don't mind it too much. Get some woodcutters in here. Three woodcutters. Get a trapper going. All right, we'll see what's in this glade. What What's my next blueprint choice? Bakery is good. Rain mill's good. But we're getting meat, right? We don't have farms. So I can't make biscuits and pie, really, unless we find some kind of... It's going to be all from scavenging, which is a little unreliable. But we can't take jerky. We're going to have meat for that, so that'll be a good source of food. What else do we want? I need clothing, right? So Weaver is going to be pretty good. I have to be really careful when I do my blueprint picks, though. Because I don't want to shut myself out of like the basics, like I was saying. We need something for berries and herbs. We need something for like vegetables, plant fiber, etc. <clears throat> Maybe this is still too loud. I live where there's no sun to begin with in the winter. Yeah, that's true. It gets dark super early. All right, we're all good here. Let's see our first batch of orders. <clears throat> Trapper's camp, meat and eggs. Ooh, I can do that. <clears throat> and this gives us plus one to meat production. Yeah, that seems good to me. The path, the path one is easiest. That's a quick blueprint. Let's do Trapper's Camp. Let's, uh... This is kind of a waste. <clears throat> Here's Amber, though. Uh, so I do have to build a makeshift post. These are all trade supplies. Kind of pointless when I can't have trade routes. Uh, the box of simple tools are very tempting. Those are going to be hard to get, actually. But I need amber later. 
should I worry about that now? I think this is probably easier to do. Ha building materials. We'll have some tools later. Uh, for glade events. Make more planks. Be more efficient with planks. This is tempting, though, just because I, I need to build up amber eventually. But we're, we're still far away from that. That's hostility three. Um, uncover four glades. Workers carry five more items at once from glade events. We can do that. <clears throat> All right, we just need 20 meat, which they're in the process of getting now. And we're about to see what's in our first glade. Is this game that good? I've had this game for three days and I've already put 20 hours in it. I'm pretty sure 20 hours. Uh, also, good morning, Conlin. I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. It's a roguelite city builder. So, uh, the city building aspect, it focuses on the early parts where you're, like, strategizing, okay, what, um, resources do I have? How am I going to lay my city out? How am I going to deal with these situations? Uh, it does the part of the city builder before it gets so big and unwieldy that you get bogged down in a bunch of, like, population management stuff. And then it also has roguelite elements, which makes every city feel different. So, it's more like every settlement is, a, it feels a lot more like a puzzle. Alright, there's our stone deposit. Let's get... A stone cutter up so we can start getting some stone. We have mushrooms. That's a herbalist camp. All right. Let's expand these roads out a little bit more. Uh, we need to move the wood cutters. Actually, here's what we're going to do with the wood cutter. We're going to cut this little section out of trees, and then we can have houses here. And then we'll cut out this little section of trees below, and try not to cut into this glade too early. <clears throat> yeah, you're basically, you're trying to, there's different map modifiers and stuff when you start a settlement. Like, good, good things and bad things. And you kind of work around those, and you kind of work around with the, the resources you're given. And you're trying to fill this blue bar up before the red bar fills. And then when you fill this, the settlement is complete. Is this a blue version? This is uh, the marshlands. Not a lot of farm ground, but a lot of meat. Get a stone cutter up. Mommy Shinigami, welcome. Uh, I think you guys slacked a little bit over here on this. Uh, whoops, okay. Our first storm and I totally forgot to build houses. I think that'll be okay for the first one, though. <clears throat> I think we'll survive. <clears throat> Get a nice grid. Uh, let's see. Smokehouse. Yeah, we should probably get that going. Um, do I have enough space for houses? I need, I'm gonna need probably five or six. <clears throat> I want to push out a bit further away from that, the house radius. Houses have to be close to the hub. I want to build my more production type buildings out away from that. Scavenger camp has no deposits. Yeah, let's move you then. Put you there. Okay, first batch of villagers we get. We have harpies and lizards. Hmm. That's, you know what? That's pretty good though, actually. Because we're going to have a lot of meat and they both eat meat. I think we'll just start with the li I, I really want these building materials, but I don't want to have a bunch of needs to try to balance too early, like varied needs. So we'll take lizards and humans. 
Uh, lizards will be good for trapping too, so let's put at least one over there. Crude workstation, we're good. Okay, so I have a little bit of time now before I need to worry about the houses, so we're gonna move this woodcutter again. And I'm gonna try to clear, like, this area. And see about getting the, uh, the smokehouse set up. Something like that. <clears throat> I guess we can go ahead and set up some houses in the meantime. I got enough builders. We need six houses now. And once again, we'll move this crude workstation a bit further out. Alright, that should be all taken care of once these last two are built. Uh, what do we have here? More orders. Jerky? Alright. One is to make eight jerky, one is to make thirty. This gives a lot of extra meat and two villagers, and this gives us plus one to jerky production. That looks pretty good. This gives flour and eggs. Uh, okay. Gain ten jerky every for every ten pie produced. I don't think I'm gonna be making a lot of pie, unless we find some like abundant, uh, like grain and such. Does the queen's anger meter go up faster on viceroy? I don't know. That's a good question. Six human houses and biscuits? I don't think that's happening. 26 human resolves doable. We'll pay, we'll take this one. I'm not I'm going to be careful about doing like biscuit and pie stuff. I don't think we're going to have a lot of farms. All right, houses are good. We're trying to clear out a place for Oh, look at this. Woodcutters are tasked with creating makeshift tools. Discovering a glade gives five simple tools. Man, I need some kind of simple tools. But I don't like the minus five to resolve. Yeah, especially when we're trying to get... I don't have beavers and we're trying to get human happiness up. I. This is probably not a good idea. We'll do houses have one extra space. What's wrong with you guys? What is this debuff? Oh, they're energized. They move 20% faster. <clears throat> okay. There's amber. Okay, this is good. It doesn't take simple tools either. We can trade berries, and we'll get a lizard and a harpy, and we'll get tin amber. Let's do that. Let's get, uh, I need the amber. Oh, no, we don't get the lizard and the harpy because we picked the amber. And since we don't have trading on this map, that's a valuable resource. And we'll see somewhere up here, we're gonna put the smokehouse. Yeah, basically on this corner would be perfect. But it, it hits the it hits the roots. That's not good. Here here could be fine. I ran into a problem in the last settlement I did. I ran into a problem where I didn't have enough spaces for housing. My my whole area was houses, and it was pretty rough. <clears throat> no, this is different. Yesterday I was playing in the coral forest. This area is a little bit different. Artie, I don't know if you were here for it, but... I'm naming my settlements after... Authentic Italian restaurants. For this... For this series. And, uh, we went with Fazoli's first.
This is where I want it. Yeah. Get that smokehouse up. I could have one house here, but I think it's okay. I need to get the smokehouse up sooner rather than later. <clears throat> What's the next one? Magianos. I was thinking Olive Garden. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Pizza Hut. Chef Boy RD. Yeah, that's a good one, too. <clears throat> it's not a restaurant, but it's authentic enough. <clears throat> Chef Boyard Domino Pizza Hut. It's pizza Hut. Uh, Weaver. I can't remember exactly what the Weaver uses to make clothes. Let me look at that. To make fabric, we need plant fiber. Leather I have. Okay, we can do a Weaver then. We should have leather with the meat. I'm gonna have to find another source of these though. Chef Boyard. <clears throat> Should just name one Garlic Bread. Hey, I can do whatever I want. Garlic Bread, not a bad idea. Oh, something I need to do quickly. <clears throat> Let's upgrade this hub level. I just need four comfort decorations. So we're gonna do some fences. Very eye-catching stone fences here. Uh, so when a, when a lizard is on the hub, you get an extra five global resolve, which is nice. They're actually giving me... When they glow blue like this and all their needs are met, they fill up the bar very slowly. And one of these days, I want to do a run where I just level up with that, mostly. Uh, let's see. Plant fiber, grain, four fabric. I think we'll take this. We'll, we'll make uh, fabric out of leather. We get some lizards. Yeah, that looks good. Three grain per minute. You're upset? Yeah, Little Caesars. Imagine a fast food where they just give you perfectly toasted cheesy, cheesy garlic bread. I mean, that's basically Fazoli's. All recipes with metal or ore have their production speed increased. Metal or ore. I don't have a lot of that yet. Maybe it's not a bad idea to build up a little grain in the background. Three per minute's not a lot, but it adds up. Not super compelling choices there, but what can you do? Now, the first place is Fazoli's. 